Hey everyone, a bunch of the new LEGO Star Wars sets that are upcoming were finally revealed officially, which means that I can now show them to you and talk to you about them. I know it's a ridiculous situation given that people have seen pictures of these things leaked for weeks and weeks and weeks now, and plenty of unscrupulous uh, stores have actually been flag flagrantly <laughs> breaking the embargo dates and selling these things to the public. So it's all a big mess, but Regardless, I'm playing by the rules. Stores in my area are also playing by the rules, which is why I've not been able to purchase these things. It's all good. Let's take a look at the pictures, and I'm just going to do this recording off my screen. I'm going to do it in real time and just be real casual about it, not looking at these from the perspective of a reviewer, but rather from the perspective of a LEGO fan and a Star Wars fan. I'm just going to tell you what I personally think about these sets as I see them. First of all, this is the Resistance A-Wing Starfighter. It's 269 pieces. It's going to cost $30 US. I think that this looks pretty decent. You know, just just as a thing, it looks it looks pretty cool. Uh, I you know, I I'm very much attached to the original uh, Return of the Jedi style of A-Wing. Uh, this is pretty close though, and I, don't know, I just I just think it looks pretty cool. I'm overall pretty ha happy with it. I like what they've done recently with embedding the spring-loaded shooters into some of the ships. I think that works out really well. And for this one, the figures are Snap Wexley and Lieutenant Connix. Lieutenant. Lieutenant, the orders were for your protection. Sorry, mixing my uh, mixing my shows together. But yeah, overall, this just to me just looks like a pretty cool thing and I think that 30 bucks for 270 pieces and for the size of this is okay I would love to see it at 25 just for its size you know 30 is not outrageous though let's move on to something else just a closer look at the figures snap Wexley and lieutenant Connix there okay they're good-looking figures resistance y-wing starfighter all right this one is 578 pieces cost 70 dollars US. Uh, yeah, it's again, I would like to see this a little bit cheaper. I'd like to see it around 65, maybe 60. I'd be pretty happy with that. So this one comes with Poe Dameron. Uh, Zor is, how is this pronounced? Is it Zori Bliss? Zori? Is that how? That? I don't know. I just don't know. First Order Snowtrooper with cape. Good. Wondering what's going on with the the head under there because that looks kind of red to me i don't know if that's just a reflection or if there's something different that they've done with this a teal colored astromech droid that's nice to see and then do over here who unfortunately is not able to actually roll i hope that's going to be dual molded i haven't seen too many pictures of it uh, up close myself this is another thing that i think looks cool but again i am very much attached to the original trilogy look of of the ship you know and it's supposed to be updated over time i don't know why they update things in strange ways that they kind of in universe you know they went from the fully cowled version to removing the cowling to make it easier to maintain them just you know going by the in universe backstory of, of the whole thing and then they've made adjustments to it over time uh, i personally don't quite like the stepping in the the cockpit around you know this this center section of the cockpit i like the tip of the nose quite a bit i am fine with the stickers even though they are stickers a lot of people hate stickers but i'm okay with them in, in some cases i think that overall this looks pretty good uh as a lego thing i'm i'm not sure if i like it as an in-universe ship as a a variant of the y-wing that you know i've, I've known for for so long i do like what they've done with the cannon up here i don't know if that's still an ion cannon but i like how it's able to swivel around and also elevate and it's just nice and compact you know that's well done my favorite thing here by far is the teal astromech droid my least favorite thing here by far is what they've done with the veins at the back they just look too thick with two c's yeah just too bulky i don't know if you'll be able to actually see through there either. I don't know what, what this looks like directly from behind, but I worry that light won't actually come through there. Uh, yeah, it looks like... I don't know. There's a possibility. There's a 
small possibility. If they if they actually have a clear brick inside of there, then light may actually get through. If they did that, then I might I might be okay with it. But I still feel like the the surround is too thick. The level of detail here is pretty cool, but I prefer the original style of Y Wing myself. And the last one that they did, wasn't it for Rogue One, I think? Uh, was really good. That one was really good. So uh, figures, we already looked at the figures there. I think this is a pretty cool looking Poe Dameron. It's my second favorite figure thing in this, this set. And it does have the bomb drop feature, so that works out. Well, uh, this is out of order. Derp. Pasana Speeder Chase, that was my mistake there. So this one comes with 373 pieces, and it's $40. Uh, on the price-to-part ratio basis, it looks fine. But when you actually look... Why do they do that? Just two different sides of the box, that's weird. When you actually look at the volume of stuff here, I'm not so sure. This feels like a good deal. There's something weird going on with the picture of the, the skiff over here. Uh, this little bit, this little gray one by two modified plate with the rounded edges. Is that an angle? But then the Technic piece it's on doesn't appear to be. I think that's just twisted. Somebody messed that up. I like the design of the skiff. It's got the little clear pieces underneath to hold it up when it's just on display on a desk or something like that. Uh, I, I like the design of it a lot and it feels like uh, minifigures can play all around this pretty well. Like You can hold on to the sides of the railing. You can just imagine having battles around this all, there are a lot of bars where hands can be attached so that's that's pretty smart design got a little bit of a a stall or a outpost uh, tent here which for a small small side build looks fine i have problems with the the tread speeder here so in universe this is like a a half repulsor lift craft uh, a repulsor lift vehicle, the back half of it is held up, and quite a bit of its weight is held up by a repulsor lift back there. Uh, I think that as a Lego model, this should have been higher up in the back, but it's, it's not too bad. But I, I don't like this idea of putting so much emphasis on tractive force on a repulsor lift craft. I understand that it does make sense to have tractive force for a land-based repulsor lift vehicle in some cases because repulsor lift craft are essentially like uh, they're like hovercraft so if you're going up a hill for instance it takes a lot of thrust to keep it not only going forward but also not sliding off to the sides all the time so this helps with that if you're on terrain that has a lot of ups and downs but the one place that we've seen this so far is just going across basically a flat desert and that doesn't make sense in a case like that that's it's very wasteful but yeah, I feel like this could have been done a little bit better as a Lego thing. It doesn't capture enough of the weirdness of the design, just in my personal opinion. I've already looked at the uh, the figures. <laughs> I'm closer because I put them. Uh, so BB-8 here. First Order Jet Trooper, this is, with the new design for the helmet. I mean, most of this, if not all of this, is is new in at least print. But the helmet is a little bit, a little bit different. I'm, I'm okay with that. And then, you know, this is just... A variant, another variant of First Order basic Stormtrooper, you know. But this one in particular is called a Tread Speeder Driver. Because, you know, we like our tr our driver figures we, we always have. So <laughs> they've given us a, a new variant. For the, uh, for the monies, for the, <laughs> for the merchandise, I'm, o I'm okay with it. Uh, yep, yep, the value here I don't feel is so great for the volume of stuff that you get for $40. This one is from Original Trilogy. It's from A New Hope, obviously, the Death Star Cannon set. Just a little miniature scene, 159 pieces. This one goes for $20. Wouldn't mind this being a little bit cheaper than that. This gives you a scene that has already been been you know captured before. Um, I have I've shown it a couple times in my two Death Star, you know, full-sized UCS Death Star reviews it's the exact same thing again you, know, you got obi-wan going up and disabling the the, the uh, tractor beam and you got a very small version of a death star cannon here on the side and they're very close together and this feels a little bit awkward to me it feels a little bit junior ish in its its presentation like things are strangely proportioned especially the cannon itself and it's just not that interesting of a set 
to me. The most interesting thing here is the inclusion of a brand new piece for Obi-Wan. His hood. They have a new mold for that. And I don't like it. I don't think it works very well. Because I don't think it works very well with the actual cloth piece. If they had an updated cloth piece, maybe the... Is that the newer type? That, that looks like the older type of, of cape. You know, the harder, t stiffer type of cape. If they had a different cut of soft cape that would kind of droop and flow with the hood, maybe this could work. And I do understand that, you know, the, the traditional one that they've used for so long may be a bit too neat in its appearance and too symmetrical and everything. But this doesn't feel like a step up to me. It doesn't feel like a good a good move. So overall, this one is is like all bad for me. It's not bad, bad, you know, it's just not particularly good. And uh, the price is the price is not even that great. Twenty dollars? Nah. No, I'm not not so happy with that. ATST Raider, so this is for the Mandalorian. Cool. That looks like a pretty tall ATST. Is it taller than they usually are? I feel like the upper or middle legs. Are they middle legs or are they lower legs? The vertical part, the most vertical part of them. That feels or looks taller than usual. I just I'm just not looking at it in comparison to others. 540 pieces for this one, and it goes for $50. Price to part ratio is great. The price to volume of stuff ratio may be okay. Okay, so here it doesn't look as tall. Interesting. It's all about the angles. Gotta... I need to see him use the angles, Bill. Oh, are those legs able to actually move? Is there some some motion available there? They don't really show that there is. No, I mean, overall it looks like the same basic design that they've used for a while. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they go back and forth, but do they, do they actually bend is my question. I'm having trouble seeing if they actually bend. I'm trying to figure out what I'm looking at. It doesn't look like it, huh? No. Hmm. Well, I, I I still wonder if they've made this one able to to stand in a partial walking pose. They've they've failed on that quite a bit in the past, up to recently. But overall it's it's following the same basic structure as the, the Rogue One one. Wasn't it? Again, Rogue One or the most recent full ATST, which was really, really good, but cheaper than this. I can understand this being more expensive given that it has more small pieces for detail. And overall, I think this is presented pretty well. Uh, it's mostly dark gray, which will be a little bit different. I think it's cool. And we'll see how how important it is in the show, you know. It might even just show up for one single one single episode or something. That would be kind of kind of weak, but I think that some people will appreciate this, but there are a lot of pieces that need to be replaced if you want to turn it into something that looks more like a regular Imperial walker, chicken walker, you know. Uh, for figures on this one, the, ah, there we go. Started out with the black background, got the white. Cool. Comes with the Mandal Mandalorian. Notice over here, uh, it looks like they've not given him a flesh tone head, so I don't even know if it's going to have a face on it. I hope there is some kind of print. Maybe an under mask? I don't know if, if Lego knew whether the actual uh, uh, actor would be revealed by this time. So I don't know if Lego got permission from Disney, ultimately, to put a face on there. It'll be interesting to see if, if they actually did put one on there at all. This is Cara Dune. Cara? 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 I don't know, again, the, the pronunciation. I, I think it's Cara Dune. And then two Klaatu warriors but they're they're raiders and it's interesting that they're not Klaatu raiders they're Klaatuinian raiders made it a little bit fancier a little bit more official uh looks like that is a little bit of a masking error right there look at that look at that gap <laughs> i think that's a masking error uh you can see the edge anyway yeah uh, he looks kind of funny with his old school uh football style <laughs> style helmet there you can just imagine that being Leather, even though it's supposed to be probably metal. Anyway, the Klaatu dudes look kind of weird. The Mandalorian looks really good. Cardoon looks really good. Overall, the set looks pretty good. Uh, value may be okay. Could be better, but maybe okay. Okay, okay. 
This is where everybody says nightmare fuel, nightmare fuel, nightmare fuel, nightmare fuel. I haven't heard the term nightmare fuel so many times ever in my life as I have in relation to this, particularly them eyes. Kind of looks like a, like a gremlin. Uh, I very much respect what the designer did for the nose. Getting the nostrils like that, much respect. Much respect for that. This is a uh, like a master builder type of type of Yoda. Seventeen hundred and seventy-one pieces. How much does it cost? One hundred dollars. Yeah, great on the price to part ratio basis, but I don't know about size. I'm sure this is a very heavy thing. We'll have to see how this this turns out. But the most of the nightmare fuel uh, comments come because of the eyes. You know, the eyes are are odd here. They're very deep. They've got the big openings around the edges, which is odd. But those eyes are able to be posed. Okay. You can go in, you can go out. I think it's only the upper eyelids. I don't know if the lowers can be posed. Certainly the uppers can be angled back and forth. This looks really good around the back to me, especially the back of the head. That is spot on. That is greatness right there. That is masterwork. Ah, that's fantastic. It just, it's so Yoda, it's so right. And it's interesting just how organic the shape is of the back of the robe. Now, of course, yeah, a lot of people hate studs in Lego, super ironically, it is what it is. But notice that the designer was very specifically trying to consistently stud up the surface of all of the, the clothed areas of him and you know, he, he almost has a burlap, burlap texture, especially in the older days, not, not going back in time, but in his old, his days of being older, you know, it's, it's a very rough texture. And if you, if you stand back and you let your eyes kind of, uh, you know, go a little bit blurry, you can start to see it. You can start to see what the designer was kind of going for here. You know, first of all, overall, they were going for the shape They're trying to get as much organic shape in there as they could. And sometimes going studs out is a good way to do that with some consistency. But I feel like there is some some additional effort that was put into it uh, to make it look more textured. Because obviously, you know, the head and all the skin areas are are smooth, almost maybe too smooth. It almost has a little bit of a feeling to me of a episode one original puppet version, you know, the theat original theatrical release episode one Yoda which was all off, you know, it was all, it was all wrong. Uh, with the eyes changed a bit, it's definitely better here. I don't know, I'm gonna have to see this in person, feel it, feel how much it actually weighs. Feel it. Yeah, how much it actually weighs and, and understand it, its presence. It looks pretty big to me. I think that the, the value here may be okay for, for collectors. And it does come with a little Yoda as well, which is, which is good. <laughs> uh, no cape for him though. Uh, are the eyes actually going to be looking off to the side like that? I hope not. I wonder what, do we see any pictures of him from around the back, if he has the gray hair or not to match. I'm not sure. I like, I like Lego's modern Yoda figures in general. This looks a little bit more like yogurt to me. <laughs> a little bit of Mel Brooks in there, but uh, I think it looks better in, in person. So moving on then. Kylo Ren's shuttle, 1,000 five pieces and this one's going for 120 dollars us not sure how the value is going to turn out on that one i feel like this may may look a little bit small for the price and i do have one issue no well, i have a couple issues with this but first of all i am so glad that lego was able to get some redemption with this because you know they took a lot of hits and a lot of hits were from me admittedly on the the miss of the design of the original Kylo Ren's command shuttle, which was the wrong color, and it didn't have the swing wings. And as time continues to pass, I am more and more convinced that that was not Lego's fault. It is still possible that it was the fault of whoever was there sketching in their one allowed notebook with their one allowed pen or pencil uh, when when uh, L. Uh, Lucasfilm was showing off these things to merchandisers. Uh, it is possible that somebody just took bad notes there because some 
manufacturers did get it right, but some others did get it wrong as well. Anyway, now we finally are getting an official black, you know, proper colored black Kylo Ren's command shuttle with a properly designed visor area. <laughs> you know, it kind of looks like a visor on a helmet. And swing wings. However, the wings don't swing enough. That's my biggest problem with this. So much of it looks so good and 100% better than, than the first one. But those wings should open up twice that much at least. You know, it has a it has a wide V. Now, maybe it does go farther because here in this picture, it looks like it's gone a little bit farther. I love the fact that they've actually integrated in a mechanism. I'm, I'm assuming that there will be some some uh, cantilevering action in there with some some Technic beams as opposed to just gears. I don't think it'll be just a geared mechanism. There should be at least three gears in there, but beyond that, it may be just levers and you know beams connecting rods. But it needs to go farther than that. That is not enough. It's, it's not enough. So that remains to be seen. I am very happy that there is still some interior space, though. Enough space for three figures. That's good. And there's still a little shooter on the underneath, on the underside, on either side. Which is cool. Interesting. They went with the green this time. It, it's such a tough thing. Uh, and I don't remember. Have we ever seen this firing? I don't think we've seen this ship firing in-universe. But you know, it's kind of like with TIE Fighters. The bolts come out green, but when they're in the barrels, the tips of the, the cannons are red. So what do you do? No matter what you do, you're darned. Darned if you do, darned if you don't. Go red. Darned if you do, darned if you don't. Go green. Either way, it's wrong. The only right way to do this, at least on TIE Fighters, would be to have a, a dual-molded, spring-loaded projectile. Spring-loaded shooter projectile. Red at the tip, and then green through the rest. And then people will still complain that it shouldn't be red at the tip. It's a laser bolt. But laser bolts don't exist in real life. You get beams. They move at the speed of light. Like it's, No matter what, you just can't get it right. But, uh, damn, yeah, they've, they've, they've tried. And certainly, this whole thing is so much closer to correct this time. I just don't think it's all the way there. Also, it's it's definitely not going to have wings that are long enough. But it still has the, the feature that worked well before of being able to quickly, you know, bring those down, push them back up, lock them into place. That worked really well. But that's just not enough angle on those wings, I'm afraid. So, for figures on this one, here we go. Hey, got the white background. Excellent. So Kylo Ren has has uh, has used some. Uh, I'm trying to think what what material that he used there. <laughs> I think red is kind of funny, just going with the whole Sith theme. But I'm thinking, ah, uh, you know what? I, I'm, I'm I forget some plasteel. You know, like some some epoxy with filler is probably what he used. Not not. Uh, I, I wish I could remember what the, the name of the adhesive is. Anyway, forget about all that. Comes with Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. Put his helmet back together. That's cool and all. Uh, this guy over here is looking like somebody else. Somebody that we've seen before. But it's not him. This is General Pride with a Y and an E, a silent E at the end. Okay. Sure. Sith Trooper. I have issues with Sith Troopers. I have in-universe issues with Sith, Sith Troopers. I don't have a particular issue with this Lego version because there's so much print there, there's so much detail. This looks very well done to me. I'm happy with this. I'm happy with what I am looking at right now as a toy, you know, and as a small toy at that. Uh, yeah, really no, claim, no complaints. My questions and concerns about this are regarding how they're going to do the Sith Trooper in universe. Are, they, are there going to be a lot of them? Is there going to be a whole army of Sith Troopers up, up in the old fleet or something? Uh, are they, if they're going to be clones, that would be cool. Are they going to be clones of uh, Force-sensitive folks? That, that could work out. But ultimately, Sith Troopers were created to sell toys like this. And, you know, most things that we enjoy <laughs> these days, a lot of things that we enjoy these days, are created to sell merchandise. Uh, you know, you gotta, gotta be real about that. But in particular, ever since Royal Guards first came out as action figures, uh, you know, we Star Wars fans of toys 
have really liked the bright red figures. They've been attracted to those, found them very special. And this is just capitalizing on that. And I, I hope there's a good backstory for these guys. And they're not just another variant with then Sith tacked onto the name to make an excuse for it being red. You know, I hope I hope there's there's something that makes sense with these because it's clearly first order generation. You know, it's not old empire. I, th I would like it better if it was if it was, you know, Palpatine era empire era stuff. And we'll see how Palpatine works in the new movie and everything. But yeah, I, I, I have questions. I also have a little note here again about masking with these images. Notice back there where it should be white. There's red. That's just showing you. There's a little behind the scenes thing just showing you how this entire all the red that you see here is fake it's not real it's 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 artificially colorized to make it look as red as possible and make it pop in in the image so you know oftentimes when you see things they aren't what they appear to be this is a regular trooper here and this is exciting two knights of ren now what about the rest of the knights of ren how are they going to give us all the knights of ren i'm curious or is it going to be just these? Are these the only ones that that are that remain now? But they're cool. And, you know, this actually works. This new hood actually works for this guy in black. But then, you know, anything works in black. The idea with these little lobes that come down to the side is that it's the part of, of a very heavy cloth that droops in front of the collarbone on either side, you know, when there's plenty of material. But I didn't like it on Obi-Wan. I don't mind it here. These look like pretty well detailed figures. I want to get some extras of these for their parts and uh, yeah, just to you know, try doing something different with them. They're interesting. I, I, I hope that they don't release more Knights of Ren in more expensive sets. You know, hopefully there'll, there'll be like a battle pack or something small that'll, that'll fill it in. Because what they did with the, the Snoke's... Uh, throne room with the Praetorians was not cool because of the, the pricing there. And finally, Millennium Falcon again. 1,351 pieces this time. The price, $160 US. The big deal, no gaps. I mean, no gaps. That's fantastic. I think this could be the Millennium Falcon. I like the size of these. Normally, you know, yeah, the UCS one exists, but sorry, it's way too big for most normal humans to own at all. And it's very expensive, but mostly it's way too big. This is a great size. And to get the coverage finally, you know, with the pie slices being so close together. Yeah, there's some gaps, right? There's some gaps in there, but most of it is pretty tight. And uh, that's that's really good. What I don't like here is around the back, I wish that these plates, these these studs up surfaces extended out farther so that you wouldn't have this top area that looks like a weird ridge. I liked it when these came all the way back or much farther back. And I also don't like these kind of uh, hose pipe things that bend around the back the way that they just end there. I wish that those ends were buried. Uh, beyond that, this looks pretty good. What I like about this most by far is the fact that it has a full interior. Look at that. This has interior. This this prop this surely has more interior space than the solo one. Now, I wasn't a huge fan of the solo one. Notice the uh the gap filler is back. <laughs> um I wasn't a huge fan of the 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 amount of space that was available in the solo one. I wish there could have been more space. But this almost has as much space as the original Millennium Falcon, which was the best thing about the original. Even though it looked poor, it had plenty of playable space. And this has great looks, plenty of playable space, and, you know, it doesn't cost as much as a UCS-1. It doesn't take up as much space as a UCS-1. This could be the Millennium Falcon. It has a couple of issues, a couple of imperfections, but overall, I am very happy with this. Uh, the way that these work is okay. You know, being able to rotate that around, it's okay. Kind of like the end there, the way that's done with the ski poles on the, the quad laser batteries. Being able to rotate them around is cool, but with the neck right there with the ball joint, the Mixel-style ball joint, 
was covered up a little bit better. I don't, I don't know if you need all that type of motion. I hope, hope you can still rotate the whole thing around. Ah, it would suck if you can't. I'm just noticing right now, maybe you can't. I hope you can. I really hope you can still rotate that in place. So, it's certainly not perfect, but I think it's the best for anybody yet. Because you can turn this into an, an OT one easily. Looks pretty good to me. Looks pretty good. Pretty happy with this. Uh, for figures, we got Old Man Lando. Old Man, all right. Uh, Chewbacca, of course. C-3PO, no red eyes, though. Where's the red eye C-3PO? That's going to have to come in a, a later set, I'm assuming. Finn, that's a really well-detailed version of a figure of a character that, in my opinion, has not been very valuable to the franchise. Yet, sorry, I just... I haven't... I, I had high hopes for him. I I was with him in Force Awakens. Last Jedi totally fell flat, felt like an unnecessary character, but this figure looks pretty good. I like the actor. I very much like the actor, but the character just was not written well. It was not well used. Uh, we'll see how see how it works out. Uh, this is Bulio. It's cool looking, interesting looking, and a cool figure. I like all the folds around the the horn. Horns looks pretty good. I have to see this in person. It almost looks like it's. Uh, like it's shaded and everything. I know it's not, but gosh, they increased the contrast a little bit too much um, on this image here. But yeah, I think that's pretty cool. And then uh, R2, of course. We'll see how wonky the print is on the head that I get this time. And finally, Dio with no ability to roll around. But that's it. That's the last figure in my uh, my batch of figures here from the release. There were there are also at least a couple other sets that are coming, but they were not officially unveiled today. So I'm not about to get my whole channel taken down, even on a temporary basis, by some offshoot contracting brand protection agency of LEGO. I just, I don't have time to deal with all that, that madness and that, that drama. Even if they're wrong about it, I ain't got time for it. So next time you'll see me talking about showing these sets will be when I get them in hand, which will be probably October 4th when they are officially released to the world, unless I, unless I can find them at normal retail prices at a local store or something. But uh, out of all of these, I'm least looking forward to this, most looking forward to the Millennium Falcon for sure. Uh, this looks pretty cool, but I don't think the value is going to be that great. The ATST looked pretty cool. I think it's going to look good on display. This one... I'm iffy on. A-Wing is pretty good. Let me know what you think about this this format. Going just full-on casual with it and just stream of consci you know, conscience, consciousness. Uh, just talking, you know, as I, as I see things. I feel really good about this. I felt comfortable doing this. And uh, you know what else? It takes literally hours less time to do it in this kind of format. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about these sets. I'll talk to you again soon.